Mail back time, bunch of stuff here. That might be a review item, I'm not sure. I'll give you links down below for various items if I can give you links for them. Make sure you check those out. It's a bag of bags. Right, so these are some little Ziploc bag things. So I've got some before, which I showed in another mail bag. May or may not be before this one, I'm quite sure it depends on how secrets goes. Could be later on, could be next week, I don't know. Anyway, the ones I got were about that big, I think. I need some slightly bigger ones. These are for components, right? So if I want to put components in a parts drawer and have multiple different components in the same parts drawer, you can put separators in the drawer or you can put them in little bags. And trying to find a bag which fits in the part drawer nicely and sits in there well so it doesn't, you know, balloon up too much and take up too much space and get too bulky um, can be tricky sometimes. So I thought I'd get some little Ziploc bags. Be good for that. So I can put components on these, like various transistors, things like that, and share them in the same parts drawers and optimise my space. Instead of having a parts drawer dedicated to one particular part, I could have, you know, half a dozen parts in that drawer. Right, what do we have here? Uh, 74 LS05, 74 LS01, 74 LS38, and 74 LS03. So these are the standard 74 series devices which are TTL, right? These these are TTL devices, and I got prompted to get some of these because I was working on that HP oscilloscope, and some of the parts in there I didn't actually have parts for, and I was surprised by that because I wanted to replace a part I didn't actually have it, and that kind of floored me a little bit. So I thought I'd better get some of these parts which I don't currently have in stock. So I've got a small quantity of each one, and that should do me for many years, I expect, because I haven't really had to use these ones very often, but. They do come from time to time, but all the ones I've come across before I've actually had in stock. I've purchased them and you know I've got them sitting there, got drawers full of these things. These ones I didn't have, so now I do. Now these are from a company called Futurelec, and I've used them a few times in the past. Yeah, they're from Thailand. Their website's rather mm, clunky. <laughs> it's it's very old. It hasn't changed over the years, but you know they sell stuff and they're relatively cheap, and you can get some stuff which can be a bit harder to get. There we go. I've got them now. So this is a 0.2mm nozzle for the Bamboo Lab A1. Because I just picked up that printer recently and I've been really happy with it. It's been working extremely well. I've actually been surprised and very impressed. But to give you an idea I printed out this large format, so big you can't even fit it on screen. Printed out this large format thing on it. It came out looking like this. I've done nothing to it. I actually forgot to put supports on. I actually forgot to check supports because this is using default settings and I hadn't selected supports. And even without supports, things like this actually came out alright. These holes, it, you know, a little bit of issue here with dropping down, but it's actually okay. And that printed out like first time, just it just worked. And come out well. This is better than the ones I've been getting off my Inter3 V2. With all the upgrades I've done to it to try and make it better. And all the tuning I've done to it to try and make it better. And this just came out straight away better. Without even trying. Bamboo Labs. Brilliant printer. Anyway. That comes with a 0.4mm nozzle. This is a 0.2. You can see he's got this whole assembly here. And you actually just swap the whole thing out. You just open the front up and pop this in. I wanted a 0.2 so I could do some finer stuff with it if I really wanted to. Sometimes 0.4 is too big when you're doing small detail. I'm going to set this video here because it's just arrived and I need it. So, here's some duper. Um, I saw this featured on Off Grid Garage and we've got some cables here JST, two different sizes. And you've got this adapter here, which is an isolated adapter. This actually is four isolated serial connections with a USB port. 
So so you plug in these cables that you use here and you connect these to a VE direct port on the Victron system. This is from my motor home, as usual. And then you can use this on the USB ports. It means you can have four Victron devices connected to one USB port. So I saw this on the off grid garage. I saw he featured it on there and he's, he's been really happy with his one. So I thought I'd get that. It will save you having a USB hub and a whole bunch of Victron cables, which are expensive. This, with these cables, is it's almost as much as one Victron direct cable. It's worth getting this. And yeah, done. Another item just adding on because it's just arrived and I need what's in here. One hundred fifty amp circuit breaker. This is Blue C Systems one. Now I've got one similar to this already in the motorhome. I've got a two hundred amp for the main battery supply, and I've got one hundred amp on the existing inverter. Well, the old inverter. I've just upgraded the inverter to a new Victron one, which has a bit more power behind it. I'm upgraded to one hundred fifty amp circuit breaker. These breakers I've had no problems with at all. This brand and this style. These are much more expensive than other ones. You can get other breakers for like literally thirty, forty dollars. But, do you trust them? No, not really. I've had some bad experiences with them. Like welding themselves shut and that sort of stuff. I have no problems with these ones. So, I trust these a bit more. Is that rightly or wrongly so? I don't know. But, um, I've had good experience with these so far. So, I'm sticking to them. Now, 150 amp is actually still a bit small for my system. My inverter actually recommends a 250 amp fuse. <laughs> so, um, that's pretty junky. But, I'm not actually going to be fully loading this inverter anyway. I'm going to put a 200 amp breaker on the inverter. That will then be the same size as the one that goes for batteries. So I'd rather scale it. You should scale it so your biggest source has got the biggest breaker on it or biggest fuse. And then your loads have got smaller ones. So that way your load drops before your main supply drops. It's just the way things should be done. In order to do that I need to have this breaker being slightly smaller. Now if I could get a 250 amp breaker for the batteries then I would do that. And then I will make this one a 200. 200 is the biggest season's going. That probably means that the next thing I'd really need to do if I did have to go up bigger is to replace these with fuses. And I don't want to have fuses because, you know, if a fuse pops, you have to get in, you have to get in there, unbolt it, bolt a new one in. Whereas these, you can just reset it if something pops. And also you can use these as isolators. So if you need to turn the supply off, you can just flick it off. Done. That's it. You've got your supply oscillated just by flicking the switch. So they're much more convenient that way as well. So they're sort of dual function in a way. Yeah, I mean, that's not too exciting, but, you know, it's just something I'm doing right now. I mean, I say I've had good results with these. I haven't had any problems with these at all. So I'm pretty happy with them. This is also part of the project which I'm playing with. I'm not happy with it yet, though. I'm still tweaking that. Trying to make a redundant power system. I haven't finished that yet. These are some more printer things. So these are these little silicone covers go over the hot end. I've got some of these as well. Just spares. You never know, I might lose one or break one or something. I don't know. But uh, three of them. So I've got one and a couple of spares. You want these spares. Oh, right. Interesting. I'm surprised they come in the same bag. That's weird. Okay, well. I saw someone use these in a modification. So it's a little mixer. So you got RF in, RF out low frequency in and you have a little mixer IC and you can use these to modify radios and stuff don't know how yet but someone is using these in CBs and use this as a conversion to take away some of the CBs internal stages and make a conversion more versatile and use some of these things and I thought that's interesting I didn't know those things existed and you can buy the chip by itself or you can buy these modules exactly how you tell it to do Different stuff, I don't know, it might just be purely a mixer. I thought I'd get some, because could be useful. Maybe do away with a whole bunch of mixer stages inside radios and simplify it just by doing something with this. Great potential. I don't know what I'm to use it for yet, but I got some because I saw them, I thought that'd be a good thing to have. And so now I've got them, but um, I don't have a specific use for them. But when I get the time where I do actually need something which has this, I could do it. As close as I can get. And... AD eight three one APZ. That's the part number that's on there. All right. It's T Link. Yeah, it's T Link V two. STM eight and STM thirty two. 
this is for a project I intend to do. It also comes with a little DuPont cable. My Adventist 6581 8.5 digit multimeter, that display on that's really really dim and it's it's still usable at the moment but only barely. I've done some work on it, I've done videos about it, I've actually got it a lot better than it was when I first got it. When I first got it you could almost not see it all and now it's actually usable. So I've got some good progress on that and got it acceptable. But there is a guy on the EV blog forum, uh, Mikkel T, who's done a lot of work with that particular multimeter, reverse engineering things and produced a service manual for it and all sorts of stuff. You know, translated stuff and he's creating circuit diagrams for it and all sorts of things. He's actually replaced the display in his with a another display. And he did this reverse engineering with it and figured that out and he's designed all the code for it and everything, but he uses an STM32. I have no experience in STM32. I probably do actually have a program here which may do it, but I've got this anyway. Because I'd rather just do it simply rather than trying to bodge things and make things work. So I know this should work with the software for the STM software. And so I've got one of these and it's just like a little cheap USB plugged programmer. It just converts it. So I mean, it's probably a different ways of doing it, but anyway. So what I actually need is the ones down the right hand side there. There's four connections. I think it's 3.3 volt only. I need to use this to program the STM32s. Once I get them, I haven't got them yet. They're coming. And here they are. Commonly known as Blue Pill STM32s. It's the F103 C8 T6. That's the one that's on there. And this is the chip and the ball which I'm going to be using. I think these have an RTC on them as well, which is why it's got the second crystal. But like I was saying before, I need to program an STM32 for the first time ever. I've never even used one before. Obviously I know about the existence, you see them with various bits of equipment, but I've never used one. So I've got a bit of a learning curve there, figuring it all out. This is what Nickel T had used in his conversion. So I thought, well, I'm going to basically do exactly what he's got and not trying to modify it in any other way. I'm just going to put it straight in as he's done it. And I've got two of them, because you always need a spare. So I'll be doing a video in the future about that multimeter when I do this conversion and actually sit down and, and get the time to do that and program on his boards, get the display in there and install all of that and get it running because I actually want to do a video about it and show you how to do it because it's going to interest some people because lots of these multimeters out there and they're actually quite good multimeters. They're not the best or anything like that. It doesn't really compare to a Keysight 3458. It doesn't really compare to that. It's similar. Its design is basically a copy of that. But it's not quite as good. But if you don't want to spend all that money on a Keysight 3458, these are pretty good value for money. And they're certainly, you know, pretty good meters. The display is an issue. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Hopefully, if I don't completely mess it up. And this looks like the displays. I've got a few different ones. Or I can't remember exactly what I bought now. Okay, blue, green, yellow. So I think they're basically the same thing maybe? I don't know. Got these little displays. OLED displays. 3.12 inch. Now this is much smaller than the original display it's in the meter. But this is all for that same project. I could use these in there. Now I did actually have some other displays which I purchased which I put to one side. Which in theory could do it as well. And I believe actually one's a flex based display if you remember rightly. And you can actually unplug this display from this board and plug that other display in here, even though it's bigger. It's the same format and everything. I believe that's doable. What these resolutions on these things? I can't remember now. 256 by 64, I think it was something like that. Anyway, this is what uh, Mikkel T used on his conversion. So I've got exactly the same one, but I've got different colours because I wasn't quite sure which colour I wanted to go with. The original display is a VFD, which means it's basically a blue colour to it. So I've got a blue display, right? So if I want to, I could use blue, so it keeps it kind of original looking. Also yellow, because I think yellow displays stand out really well, because they've got a really good contrast. I actually prefer the yellow type. And also got green, because you know, green's also quite easy on the eye. I don't normally like blue displays, but if I want to keep it looking kind of original, I could go with that one. But yellow is usually my go-to if I can. This one's interesting, because it looks like it's got two stacked together. Flex cable, here we go. Little driver board. Another driver board. I don't know what this was now. I really don't know what this is for. I've forgotten. 
That's drivable. TFT LCD touch Arduino shield. Ah, that's right, it's a Arduino shield. Right, okay. I've got that as an optional thing, in case I wanted to use that. Yeah, that's what that is. It's like a universal ball which I use for different things. And it's meant for going on top of an Arduino. Oh no. And here we've got a little connector and it flex and another board from this is all from buydisplay.com so I've got these because I thought I might need them I don't actually have a clue yet I may or may not let's check out the other box see if it makes more sense and here we have more displays these are very much like the ones that I showed you in those other cases these are from buydisplay.com, so same kind of deal. I think this one's the same as the one that Mickle T used. Another display here, let me show you this one. It's a flex display. Try not to bend it, <laughs> that'd be bad. So we've got a display here as well, which has got a flex coming out this side. I'm thinking this might be an option as well, which is what these boards are for. So you get this and you hook this display up to this board. And that's just the really concise, it's like that's the panel, all right? So, don't have anything extra, it's nice and thin. I thought this might also be an option that's a bigger size. Obviously, this is much smaller than what's already in there. And this is actually closer to the right size. And this one's different again. This one's like a full panel with a bit more obvious, different kind of flex on it. So, I've got a few different ones to try out and decide which one's going to fit. But I mean, this is what Mickle T's used this type. But I'd like to try and use this one, I think. If I can, because that'd be better. I don't know if it's possible. I don't know. But, you know having a selection around is always handy. You know, tinker with different things or do some kind of display replacement. Sometimes you need a variation of parts. All right, that's all that project all lined up. So I've got lots of things here for different options. It's likely I always go to the simple route and go to one of these ones, but I don't actually have a clue yet. As far as how to use these boards, I don't have a clue yet either. Um, yeah, that's all part of the fun, isn't it? I think this might be a review item because it's packaged a lot like on the other few items I've got recently. I don't like seeing even these things. Anyway, I was right, it is a review item. It's from Fernusi. So Fernusi sent me a tweezer to look at. So Fernusi saw the video I did about the Zotec tweezer, the Zui tweezer, and they said, oh, we've got one in. You know, do you want to look at ours as well? And I said, yeah, sure. So um, here it is. So I'm going to do a review on this as well. Oh, that's a nice case, look at that, it's flash. So I've now got a few different tweezers. I've got this one, I've got the Zui tweezer, and I've also got the Shannon tweezer as well. So I've got a few different ones here. We'll have to have a look at these, do a review on it. I'm not going to power it up now. I might leave that as a mystery. So you're going to get a little USB-C charging cable, which I just dropped on the floor, and I'll never see that again. We've got some little metal pad, I want that for. I'm sure it's in the manual. So watch out for that review, got some spare tips, or different tips, these are angled ones. I'll do that review very soon, watch out for it. Check out other links down below. There's also links down to these items if you're interested in anything here. And there will be a link to this review when I publish that, so watch out for that coming out. That will be soon. And as always, I'll be checking it across my standards on our view, and we'll see how it comes out. And I even compare it to other tweezers I have. I've got, I've got a Shannon tweezer, the 42, SD42, and I've also got the Zotec Zoe tweezer, which I've forgotten the number of right now. I can compare it against both of those as well and see how they compare against each other. The Shannon tweezers is like my go-to standard because that's been really, really good. Zoe one was also very similar. It gave really good results and we'll see what this one comes out like. So thanks a lot for Nursey for sending that to me. And it's got the same thing which is triggering me as well on the other one. For Nursey's this way up, the text is the other way up. Mmm.